This video is brought to you by Ravenscraft Realty of Northeast Missouri. Oh, Dad and I are over here at Fall Creek today. Just put in another 26 feet on this culvert, make a wider entrance in this road ditch. And had a couple plugs in it up above where he cleaned out. And here comes the water. So that means it's at least halfway uh, got fall to it. It's a very satisfying sound here in the water that you wanted to come into the culvert pipe. Hearing it go through and watching it go through. Of course, this, this dish will it even itself out. There's some dips and dives in it. The water will make a path, always does. Rolling out the other end into the big ditch. That's a success. Who are you and what are you doing in the shop? <laughs> you hear that? That doesn't sound like a tractor. What do you have to say for yourself? She's a little camera shy. But she's a cute little baby cow. Yes, you are. I'm out boundary in some fields today. It's not, uh, it's not dry. That's why I got these fancy tracks. It's kind of a slow process, but it doesn't help because here I am picking up rocks in this field while I'm here. Uh, not what I really plan on doing, but hey, I'm out here. I got time. I got a place to throw the rocks, so I'll grab them. Well, we're finally doing something in a tractor. Not field work, but uh, I'm gonna move this thing out to uh, Nutrien so that they can get it set up for our for the ammonia bar that we use. Every year uh, to put on our anhydrous ammonia, we lease a uh, Dalton bar. I think it's a 50 foot bar from uh, Nutrien here north of town. And uh, so far, I mean, we've been doing this for three years now, and it's worked out pretty well. And uh, we also get all of our ammonia from Nutrien. Maybe in the future we'll do some with MFA, but I'm not sure. And I know many of you all are involved with agriculture yourselves, and uh, you'll probably know the name of Doyle Fertilizer Equipment. Yeah, that's this place. And here we are. That wasn't too hard of a drive. While we're here north of town, we're gonna move this conveyor and put a sweep in a bin on a farm that's half a mile that way. kind of tired of filling these dinky 36 foot pins. Dad and I were driving along the south end of our home farm and noticed something blue out in the field. Got a nice free mineral tub here and it doesn't even have any holes in it. It was made to be. See this is where you have kids. Mineral tub in the field. I didn't want to get it. Go get it. Hey Chase. Feel for me. This weekend I set out to rebuild the hydraulics from a 7020. I got this one done off camera so that I knew what to actually do once I did it on camera. So it wasn't too hard and I will do the next one with you guys. There is a snap ring in here that needs to come out but to do that you have to make sure that the barrel is all the way at the backward side of its stroke. Where's my hammer? Perfect. And part of the reason I'm, I'm doing this is to convert these to ISO, but also because these uh, remotes were a little on the worn out side. There's a couple of the little balls that were missing and they leaked a little bit. And I also don't want to use adapters. These O-rings are a lot, or these uh, snap rings are a lot easier to get out than they are on the PTO seal and everything on the 4020 or any new gen John Deere. Done. 
Okay, I did one half of this remote already. And next step, after you get the uh, uh, snap ring out, is to take this uh, expansion cover here and get it out, which requires a hammer and a uh, punch. And you basically, you, you beat on it until it comes out. Ow. I like to use a magnet to kind of fish it out. And you're done with that, you don't need it anymore. And inside here, there's an E-clip that holds the, uh, uh, the, the breakaway coupler deal in for the deer style hookups. You want to take that out as well. Here we go. Junk, don't need it anymore. And there's a spring. Don't need that. And of course the coupler, yeah, the, the cow's back there. Um, take a punch again, tap it out. Don't need it anymore. Put that in your used parts pile. And now you're gonna take your hammer and your punch and knock the old barrel out. You may need to put it over a vise to do this. At least that's what I had to do on the first one of these I did. Okay, it's going in the vise. You'll start to see the barrel drop down. And this whole, all, all of it comes out, every bit of it. May need another screwdriver to help pry it. This one seems to be fighting me. Oh well. There. And that's how you tear it down. Getting it back together is, I don't know, you, you clean it up a little bit, make sure there's no uh, scarring or anything in the bore, and you're gonna need an, a pick. I like this 90 degree pick, and uh, I'm gonna take the old O-rings out, because the conversions, they're Grove uh, ISO. They, on the other two tractors that I've got with them, they seem to have done a fantastic job so far. I haven't had any big issues. You'll take both O-rings out. There's two of them. And the second one's about halfway through. Get under it with the pick. Sometimes it takes a couple tries. Ugh, come on. Man. And there you go. Now it's tore down. Okay, next step, drop the new insert in. Be careful, make sure that you've got this little indexing pin here facing up, because if you don't, you're just gonna pound on it. I have found out the hard way. Ugh. Now, ideally, you just give it a couple light taps and it falls into place, but uh, Thus far, it hadn't worked out quite that way. Uh-huh. And once you've got it sent home where it needs to be, take your O-ring pick, run it around the groove that the uh, snap ring sits in. There's my old snap ring. It's over here somewhere, right here. Clean it up and do what a snap ring is supposed to do. And these snap rings are a lot easier than the bigger ones. 
I just still don't know if I can quite get it one-handed, though. Nah, probably not. There, I got it most of the way for dramatic effect. There we go. That wasn't too hard. As fate would have it, I rolled one of the O-rings, and guess what? We don't have one. So, I'm at Farm and Home again to have it. Thank you, Farm and Home. Really came in clutch today. Got the new O-rings that I got at Farm and Home on top and the old one on the bottom and they look the same, so I assume that they're the same. Okay, where were we before I found out I had split O-rings? Oh, so now that you got your bodies back together, I'll take the end caps here that are supplied with the kit and put them on the back, seal everything up, and then torque them to 50 foot-pounds. Actually, I had that in the wrong order. First, you need a 5 uh socket in your torque wrench. You have to torque the inside first. 50, no problem. Let's go. I'm terrified that I'm gonna break something and then have to go buy different uh, couplers for the 7020, which has already been more expensive than anticipated. But isn't it always? Okay, the caps on the end are torqued to 15 foot-pounds and you need a half inch socket right over here. This really isn't that difficult, but uh, I think all in all, I might have might have 45 minutes in this. That includes uh, taking it apart, cleaning it, and then putting it back together. And it took me all of 10 minutes to take them off the tractor, and I might even be able to get them back on before supper. And 15 foot pounds is not very much, like that. I also have some other uh, relatively big news. I am now a two-state farmer. Yep, 189 acres spread across two states and uh, 30 miles. Go me. Better watch out. I'm a super ultra mega BTO with a 4020, a 7020, a 730, a 4320, and a six row planter. And pioneer couplings on all my tractors. So nobody is safe. Chase Goldinger is gonna be everywhere. Now, there is one more step that I very nearly forgot, or forgot to include on camera, and that is the expansion caps that go on top to seal everything up. All you need to seat these are a hammer and a punch. So all these do, so the working theory of an expansion cap is that you hit it and it flattens out a little bit and it seals up, like that. Well, I got the uh, actual couplers themselves on and got to put the dust caps on and then we're done. It's a beautiful evening and although supper is only nine minutes away, I think I need to take some time to reflect. I like to come to the uh, front porch at this old house and uh, sit and watch the sun go down over everything I care about and just look back and think of how lucky I am to be where I'm at and to have the people I do and uh, the blessings that have continued to keep coming and hopefully they don't stop. As I look out, I see nothing but opportunity. Most of my viewers have been around for a while and uh, been along for the ride that I've been on for the past couple of years and uh, I'm gonna keep doing it. I just sometimes have to, you just gotta take a step back and look at what you really have and think of all the people who don't have that opportunity and you just have to really be, appreciate what you do have, including the people, because 
you can replace a tractor or a gun or anything really a house but people are you know you only get one you only get one mom you only get one dad you only get one younger sister you only get one one may you only get one quandale you only get one oreo the calf but i want everyone to uh pause the video and go to someone that you love and tell them that you love them because who knows you may never get to say it again somebody keeps headbutting me i don't know why you're kind of honorary aren't you i'm gonna add this to the list of things that i've never done before that i have now done which is feeding a cow a little oreo while we're of course greasing our high speed 24 row planter with a $250 sale barn cow. Now it is Monday morning and I have a couple things to do here around home before I head to Old Columbia. And uh, gotta go to the bank, gotta go drop a rent check off. Didn't take too long. There's the 7020 now with uh, Pioneer hydraulic couplings. Okay, so last night, Dad and I pulled the 4320 into the shop and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the gear reduction starter swap. So I have the old one off, that wasn't too hard. And uh, this fancy new one, it's the gear reduction starter. So I think, I think that it turns it over quicker. Not certain, but supposedly it's just a lot better than the uh, normal starter. But unfortunately, you need a little bit longer uh, battery cable. It goes back to the positive lead. So. Uh, I'm gonna go to Side and Tricker and have a new one made or found, and I will be back in the near future. It's kind of chilly this morning, like 37 degrees. I got the uh, new battery cable for the 4320, and right now I'm gonna wash the 4020's rear end off because it's kind of oily after the whole hydraulic remote and PTO seal repair fiasco. So I'm gonna uh, blast that off real quick. Then I'm probably gonna take it back to the other house so that I can work on the 4320 the rest of the day. Okay, more gear reduction starter fun. So I need to put this end on this wire so that this can go from the starter solenoid down to the the, the big post on the starter because this one is the right size and this one there's not enough material there for me to make it the hole big enough for it to work. So we're gonna make it work, which I'm, I'm not super sure how it's gonna go, but we're gonna try it. As you all can see, I'm a master electrician. After all, I did uh, wire a 730 diesel, a 24 volt positive ground with a bunch of LED lights. So I'm pretty good at what I do. Uh, okay, so get the old end off, you know, you trim it up, make it look really pretty, blah, blah, blah. Don't care. Actually, I do care. This is a nice enough tractor that I can't just do a, a quick and dirty job like I do some other times. And this is Grandpa's tractor, so uh, Grandpa can't see it looking ugly. Grandpa told me he doesn't like ugly things. So we're making it pretty as we can, or pretty as it has the capacity to be. It'll be difficult to get all this coating off the wire without uh, wire strippers that are big enough, but we'll try it, we'll get there. Feels like I'm defusing a bomb on uh, Modern Warfare 2 or 3, or Black Ops 2. I was a gamer back in my middle school and early high school days. And recently, my roommates and I in Columbia uh, started grinding on Farming Simulator again. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun, but uh, I had to go out on my own because I didn't like the way my insurance agent was running his farm. So we had to part ways, unfortunately. Speaking of parting ways, uh, no more cowgirl. So maybe, might be getting a little bit more frequent video uploads now, but... Uh, it just wasn't going to work out, and so we parted ways. It's, I'm not bitter about it or anything. No reason to be. Life's way too short to be bitter over things that are, as, I don't want to say as trivial as that, but uh, I don't see a need to 
be mean to somebody that you once had deep feelings for, so I'm not going to be. Hmm. This is not going to work. Might have to make a farm and home run. Oh. Was this the right end for this gauge of wire? Absolutely not. But did I make it work? Absolutely. Continuity on this video is going to be terrible, but this is several hours later, and I kind of have stuff grounded. Um, I'm curious. So I think this is my keyed power right here. Uh, so watch this. So I'm going to turn the key right now. Nothing's going to happen because stuff isn't hooked up right. So this top prong on the solenoid, I think, is my keyed power. Because when I turn the key, the light comes on. I'll try it from a different spot to make sure I'm not fooling myself. This looks like a ground. I'll try it again. Hmm. So not power's not getting from the this is way more difficult than I thought. Holy crap. Okay, watch what happens when I, pre I put this wire here in my hand from this post to this thing here on the uh, relay. Watch this. Okay, so I'm touching one thing to the other. Watch what happens with the lights. So I think that's my missing link. I need a wire going from keyed or from keyed power to the okay it's i don't know if you can can you guys hear this that's the fuel pump turning on and off so i think i think i got this now i think okay dad and i did it did end up figuring out what we needed to do so apparently there's an internal uh relay in here all you needed to do is take the wire that goes from here up to the one side of this this small relay up here so you, we eliminated this one entirely and then you take your hot wire from where the battery cable comes in right here and put it to the other side and then this is our ground so listen real close we got power and keyed power awesome I mean, it's kind of cool this morning a balmy 35 degrees it's kind of dark in the shed however 4320, it works, it moves, it starts a lot nicer now because of that gear reduction starter. And I ran it around the the uh, barnyard last night just making sure everything worked and rolling a little bit of coal every now and again, just casually. But uh, that was a semi-productive weekend. And uh, I guess I'm gonna go back to Columbia now. It's a little bit earlier than usual. However, I believe I have a date. so. I'm going to go back to Columbia, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. See you later.